All right, so this is our first point of the day. Score is 37-36. We're going to watch it in regular time, and then we're going to break it down and do some slow-mo. So uh, check it out. All right, here we go. Well, I already gave the early switch sign. Little hand signal there. That's right. Partner communication is important. Good drop. Another one. Really good think exchange here. So again, we're going to watch this in real time here, and then we're going to break it down. Ooh, with the Ernie. Oh, yeah. So off the bat, you notice I give Pesa a hand signal. All right, hand signals are for those teams that stack. Um, obviously, you can tell my partner here is left-handed, so we are stacking. I would always play on the left side. He always plays on the right side. Um, in other terms, I'm playing the add side. He's playing the do side. Um, the hand side I'm giving him right now is to switch. So if you guys don't know hand signs that you guys can use for your uh, partners, open palm is, you know, five fingers up is to switch. All right, if you guys close that fist, that would be to stay and this right here is a fake. These are three signs I use almost every time I play with a left-handed player. Okay, so we're going to slow this down here. Again, uh, like Caden said, he's playing with a lefty, uh, which is Pesa there. So they want their forehands in the middle. So we're going to see this break down here. All right, so Craig is going to serve here. And just really quickly, we have Kyle Kazuda on the far side on the left and then Craig Johnson on the far side on the right. And you can see here that's coming to Pesa here. Yep. Okay, good. Good return there. Now I'm, I'm just gonna go back. I do wanna mention one thing here that's really, really important. You can see as, as Craig is serving this ball, we got Pesa who's gonna do a good job returning it. You can see right here, Caden, you can see his eyes here um, he's looking at his partner return. Now, even at lower levels and intermediate levels, this is something that's very, very important. You can see Caden watching the ball. Caden, what would you say, um, why is it really important to watch your partner return the ball? Yeah, no, you need to know where your, uh, your partner is going with that return, right? Because if he's going to go cross court and you aren't looking, there's a very big opportunity that that guy could literally hit his return into you. Right, so I personally love to watch the return um, just so I know kind of where he is and where he's going with that return. Yeah, so one other reason why I think it's very, very important and key to watch your partner return it to see their body position. Yeah. Um, you're also seeing the serve, like how difficult it is and you're, you're seeing how deep it is. Right. So I kind of prepare myself if, if I know that my partner returning is gonna have trouble on their return or they're gonna hit a short return. Call an audible. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and that's something for me, I'm on defense, but if I see them hit a good quality return, pretty good return here like Pesa does here, I know that, um, you know, I know that we'll be on the offense um, at the net. Right. Okay, so sure. we'll go back here and you can see the switch. Uh, we talked about the stack. You can see yep. Caden uh, switching and then again, you you may not see this a lot in lower level play, but we saw Craig here yeah. um, set up for his third shot drop. And I want to mention your positioning here, Caden, super squeezing the middle. And yeah. look at Pesa. He actually comes in, and you guys are really close. And, and and a lot a lot of people may look at this and say, well, why are they so close together? Right. Right. And oh, you should you're probably out of position. But why don't we why don't you what's your thoughts of your positioning right now? Yeah, so personally, as someone who is stacking here, right, you have to kind of clog middle, especially with where he returned the ball. He, you have to clog middle and, uh, and, and close that hole because that is the easiest shot for them to kind of get us confused, right? So I'm taking control of middle until I know my partner is there and, uh, and I'm just trying to hold down that middle ground until... Pesa gets into position to to either take control of it or, you know, until we, we see the next ball. 
Yeah, it's really good, Kaden. Um, it's just a really strong positioning here. You can also see Craig set up for a backhand. It looks like he's going to drop it. Right. So he's, you know, he's not going to drive it in this situation. So you don't really have to worry about the sidelines or anything too much. Correct. Covering middle is really good. So we see yep. Craig here drop the ball. Right. And, and one thing I'll actually point out really quickly about Craig is he actually, one thing you notice is before okay. he actually hits his shot, he kind of moves in, not expecting the return, and ends up having to move mm, back. Really, All really right? good. Now, notice, he hits a good drop still, but when he's hitting his drop, his weight is moving backwards, okay? Now, for Craig, that's not an issue because his mobility is still good. But if you guys don't have great mobility, the last thing you want to be doing is moving back or have your weight backwards on a third shot drop because then we have so much court to work with while you're still trying to recover and get forward. Yeah, so one thing I can say about that is I actually maybe think Craig was maybe expecting something to drive off of and come in off, but the stepping back, what you see Craig do, it's just creating space. At times right. we will have to hit a drop falling back, but you can see mo most players at intermediate or beginner levels will just end up hitting a half volley. Correct. But Craig creates adequate he space does. here. He does. And he still has a good contact out in front. Right. So that's really good. Okay, so here's the drop coming to Caden. Let's see what he does. Okay. Right. So notice my body language, all right? One thing I was trying to do before I let that ball bounce was take it in the air. Yes, and I tell players this all the time. You are looking for an offensive swinging volley uh, from the get-go. As soon as you're, you see your opponents drop the ball, you're looking for something to swing out, swing at maybe to roll, and you can see Caden just makes a good decision. And look at his left foot and his right foot. It's a little shuffle step off the line, right? And that's, again, creating space. So anytime... Typically that I let the ball drop um, and I'm sure you Kaden when someone hits a good quality drop like this is you create space and back up off the line Yeah, you you have to um, if someone does hit a good drop that is at your feet and and you have to let it bounce You have to take that step back so that ball doesn't get behind you, right? So even though I wasn't able to be as offensive as I possibly wanted to be I was still able to place the ball and be offensive with the ball even off the bounce just maybe not applying as much pressure as I would have liked to with a ball in the air. Okay, so really good, Caden. So you um, decide to slice this ball. And just going back here, because Craig was falling back here, you'll see actually Kyle, you'll see him come in a little bit, and he's leading his partner in. Right. So you will see this typically a higher level, higher level play. The person that is not hitting the drop is usually leading their partner in. Yep. And what that does, that just puts a little bit more pressure on you and Pessa right now. Right. And it kind of forces you to hit it cross court. Correct. Um, and also in this position, Kyle could probably, if you like, let's say you popped it up or something right. like that, he can find something to pick off, but you, um, you d make, do a really good job with that. Uh, slice, yeah. Slice. Well, and I, I know Kyle is, is detaching there, which is why I, I am forced to go cross court, which is actually the right play, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're forcing me to go cross court, which is closer to the sideline, which means more possibility for error. But that being said, I mean, I could have easily, if I didn't feel um, Kyle's pressure there, I could have easily gone, done something dumb and, and kind of floated that slice middle and he would have had a, a, an easy sitter. So luckily I was, I was pretty attentive to that. Yeah, and then one thing I do want to mention is um, Craig's and Kyle's split step here. You can see them come oh, in. and just in sync. Right as you... That. Right as you hit, it's around the same time. Obviously, Kyle here is a little bit um, further ahead, but it doesn't really matter. This is a good, um, just is just a good example of a good approach here, and then a good split step here, being yep. well balanced at the same time. All right. So, notice too, you can see Kyle um, and yep. Craig. Notice how they're sliding to they move the together. Right. Yeah, move together, and all of you guys, even Pesta here, moves a little bit, and. Kaden, you're in a pretty aggressive position in the middle, Yep. but you know that you can cover um, to your left if you need to. Absolutely. So right. Let's I'm always taking away my opponent's, opponent's two easiest shots. Right? Yep. That's up the line, right? Or um, Yep, up the line or up the middle. Yep. So here we go. Good dink here. And I call that, that's a good lunch step there, Kaden. Right. Nice There's my middle balance. dink. There's that middle dink that we talked about. 
And again, this is just really good play from Craig. Usually when I get to the middle dink, I usually go back to the backhand side. Right. It's just a, a good shot to keep it away from play, um, most players' weapons here. Right. And again, just look at everyone slide over. Beautiful um, footwork by everyone. As Caden pulls that dink to his right, you see Kyle, Craig, Pessa, and Caden, everyone shifting. Okay? You always, always have to follow your shot or your partner's shot. Always. Yep. And as Craig hits this ball back, notice this, everyone shifts back. Yep. Okay. So for those of you watching this, um, following the ball, we talk about it all the time, but if you're going to dink the ball cross court or hit the ball cross court, make sure that you and your partner are following it over. So this ball comes back to Caden and here we go. So Caden, what's your thought process there? You're taking this, um, cross court ball and you're actually putting it down the line. Correct. Uh, instead, so just a little mix up, or what would you say? Yeah. So, so one thing I I love I love to do with my dinks is kind of get people out of a rhythm. Um, so what I'm doing in this situation is I know Craig's going to be sitting right there middle. I know I haven't gone to Kyle's forehand up the line dink yet, so I kind of wanted to get Pesa involved and see if he could create something um, by maybe kind of taking Kyle out of the point the first couple balls and then feeding him one where he's not used to taking and seeing if he'll uh, if he'll make a mistake out of it. Yeah. Um, so mixing up your dinks and being able to put your dinks in different spots is, is super helpful to not only get your partner involved in a point, but also um, just to kind of get a player hitting a ball that maybe isn't hitting the ball that much, right? Like in this point, we're not specifically picking on Craig, but we like this pattern of going kind of, you know, cross court to backhand Craig. Uh, Craig is so consistent there, but, you know, we're trying to see if maybe we can set something up and make a mistake and then get a partner cold and, and, yeah. and uh, exploit that. Yeah, and another thing too, like like you just mentioned, Craig is so good with his backhand cross court dink. You've played him many times. So just trying to find some other opening, switching up to Kyle. And usually what we see exactly here is when you go up the line, that person in front of you will usually go cross court. So that gets right. Pessa involved as well. Correct. So just like here, um, again, here's the ball here. When you switch up a pattern and go, um, you know, down the line, the high percentage shot for that player usually is a cross court ball. Right. So it gets Pessa involved here. So here we go. We see a couple good dinks here again. Notice everyone is sliding. So a little bit lifted ball. Yep. Okay. Ooh. Just the mistake we wanted to kind of see. Yep, and we'll get back to that. And then we have uh, the Ernie. And, oh, there's a lot to talk about here, but we are going to go back. So really good uh, put away there by Pessa. But we're going to go back here, and we're going to mention a few things here. So we got this lifted up dink from slightly lifted up from Kyle here. Now, this is a very, very attackable ball especially for someone uh, of the caliber of PESA here. Right. But one thing that I do want to mention is as soon as you see somebody's paddle drop, like their yep. paddle head, and you see their wrist flex a little bit, this is um, a time where they are going to be attacking. And right. PESA here has just, he has a lot of options. He, has he does. A, this is like a little bit of a flick. It's not really a roll. One thing that I would like to see from Craig here. You can see as the ball comes, he kind of jumps and he's right. leaning back. And that's what kind of pops that ball up. Right. If he, he's a great player, but you know, we all do this at times. We kind of get surprised, but when someone, you see someone attacking, you kind of want to hold your ground yep. the best you can and have both feet on the ground. Well, if you see it, he actually reads forehand first before he goes mm -hmm. back in, which uh, gets him into an uncomfortable position. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He, so he, he, it should have been more of a slide or a step, but instead in the moment he yeah. kind of lost his footing, which made him off balance, which then kind of set up the next ball. But it's, it's, it was his way of creating space, Yeah, right? Obviously didn't go as planned as he wanted it to go. But that being mm -hmm. said, as far as recoveries go, that's pretty, uh, pretty athletic. Yeah. So again, we all get put in situations like this. Again, you see that 
the opponent in front of you is going to attack the ball 99% of the time that ball is going to come that attack is going to come straight to the person in front of you so Craig knowing this he's getting prepared right and actually looking at his paddle you might think that he's going to go at that right shoulder which is why Craig actually sat forehand first look at that right he's going where he could roll right he could roll here and go right at that right shoulder but instead he comes here and goes to the backhand yeah which is pretty crafty yeah. That's pretty impressive. So the next thing I would do want to mention here is Pesic is being ready. After you attack everyone, again, especially when you get to higher levels, you don't want to just attack and think you win the point. Right. What Pesic does a good job of, of here is he attacks and he's ready for the next ball. Right. So you can see here, and then he angles it down towards Kyle because he knows Kyle has to cover middle there. And this is just a really good angle shots, which sets up the urn here. Yep. Right. Notice, ooh, what's the first thing I look at? I look at his head. I, I watched his head go down for that shot because, one, it was outside of his striking zone, and, two, it was jamming him. So I knew his easiest shot is going to be up the line, which is why as soon as I saw his head go so, down. Yeah, so you can see Kyle, he's stretching on the reach. And in this position, Caden, you you know, if you're going for Ernie or looking for something, uh, what are the a few things that you're looking for again? Yeah, I'm looking for the head to go down. I'm looking for the ball to be a little bit behind my opponent, right? And I'm looking for kind of him to dink that ball up my line, which is why yeah. as soon as I see that ball out there and I see his head only focusing on yeah. where the ball is, that's when I start to move for my Ernie. Now, you don't always get it, but... yeah. That is something to look for if, if you are going to get opportunities to Ernie. Yeah, and here's the other thing too. When you're on the stretch and on the reach like this, it's very difficult to get that ball back cross court. This right. is why the Ernie is very, very effective. If you have somebody in a situation where they are getting pulled um, and, you know, and they're stretching out and reaching like this, it's typically going to go down the line. Yep. So Caden does a good job here. And Kyle, good, good recovery here. But again, I think a little bit out of position. Yep. Um, Craig, well, both Craig and Kyle went to cover the middle on my Ernie. Yeah. So again, a little miscommunication there, but this is just a good put away by Pessa. Yeah. So here we go. We got the switch again. Caden shows Pessa. Then we got Craig serving. Good return here. Notice clogging the middle, which we talked about. Shuffle steps. Good patience here and just... Following the ball and making sure that when the ball moves one way that you and your team follow it as well. Here's a little pop-up, boom, and then the Ernie and the finish. Nice. I'm uh, Honestly, pickleball is so, more, so much more entertaining when it's in normal speed compared <laughs> to slow speed. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, when the reason why we do this and the reason why we break it down is uh, these little minute things, you can't even see it in real time, and this, no. is, this is why we do it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that point breakdown. We watched it in real time and then in slow-mo. Again, you can see a lot of minute things when you slow it down. Uh, actually, it was, you know, when slowing it down, there's a lot of things you see. So if you really like this, we'll make a part two and part three and so on. Um, but yeah, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you like this content, like the slow-mo breakdowns of professional points. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode.